everybody, my name is Caden. My name is Jaden. My name is Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Ahua and the U Tora YouTube channel. We are so glad you are here with us tonight. And we know your time is short. And we're trying to get this together. And Caden started off and he kind of yelled this one, but I think this was good. We're, we're, we're getting it together. We're going to have a good stick. We're going to have a good act and we're going to make this one. But this is the 613 Laws of Yahua, as put together by the... Uh, Somebody else who is, you know, it's, these are not like a list of laws by Yah. And when we are talking about the laws of statutes and commands, they're Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And that is the uh, laws, commands, and precepts, and the things that our Creator has and does wish for us and for our lives and for um, the way He wishes us to walk with Him, the way He wishes us to, to communicate with Him, the way He wishes to us to do everything with him and so it is important that we go through them and that we know them and that we write them on our hearts minds and souls um, we should be repeating them we should be talking to our kiddos about it every single day we should be applying it to our lives we should be judging by it um, we should be judging others by it by using the the laws of the torah so let's get into it and let's see if we can get through this list at some point uh, 491, I think I just got yeah. smoked. Yeah, it did. always Google Docs always takes you. Google Docs, yeah. Not a lot of RAM on this little tablet we're using. So you guys will get to roll through this list. And um, how was this list? Was it all jacked up, boys? Uh, yeah, it was some weird stuff. Today. It, it was, is a little Very uh, talking about Jewish stuff. And uh, I was like, don't do it. Like, you can uh, redeem Jewish maidservants and like, you can sell Jewish people. To you. It, it was weird. It was weird. Ooh, we could sell people? Is that according to the Talmud or something? I don't know. I was talking about how, like, uh, the Canaanite will always be your slave forever. But it, did, it, it didn't say that. It said they are, you, can, you can be their slave, but you can't impress it. It's like, your Canaanite will be your slave forever, and they can never leave from you and stuff. That's what it said. <laughs> Any Canaanites out there? <laughs> Goimer. Done. It, yeah. So, all right. So, 491 is where we begin on this whole thing. Um, when a murdered person is found... Oh, we discussed this yesterday. Is When a murdered person is found in open country and the murder is unsolved... Break the neck of a calf by the river valley. Deuteronomy 21.4. And that goes for 492, which is not to work that river, valley, or plant there. Anyone who has it? All right. And the elders of that city shall bring the heifer down to the wadi with flowing water, which is neither plowed nor sown, and they shall break the heifer's neck there in the wadi. Okay, and then uh, does it say not to work that river? Or yes, it is. Never work that river that has never been plowed or sown. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, 493, um, same as the next one, Deuteronomy 22.8. And so 494 is the next one. Make a guardrail around flat roofs. Um, who has it? Deuteronomy 22.8. It says, when you build a new house, then you shall make a parapet for it, for your roof, so that you do not bring blood guilt on your house when one falls from it. Okay, so what's this all about, gentlemen? Uh, I think people back in the day, they would, like, sleep or hang out on the top of the roof. There would be so, people uh, living there. Yeah. And so this probably, there was enough issues that um, they were, um, this had to be some law. Yeah, because uh, if, if, you fall for, if you fall off someone's roof, then uh, whoever has it would be guilty. So instead of put like, a gate around things so people don't just fall off the roofs. Yeah, you got to wonder how many times people fell off the roof before they put a guardrail and it's, it's interesting the things that yah has and we end up with um or things that became a problem that uh instead of people falling off and you know um because you'd have to your house would be unclean your how everything under well i i mean i don't i don't know if the dead would be on the next to the house if, i mean if the, i guess the blood touched the house the house might be on the but thing. you'd be guilty of it i mean on your hands you own the house you know people are going to be up there like because bad day people live on the roof right you probably have like man servants maids servants, maybe live up there maybe that's their thing i mean yeah, and so, if they fell from it, that'd be your fault because you did not put something out there to protect them. Prevent anything. It's the same thing as your cows. When your cows break out and destroy your neighbor's field, if you didn't put up a fence, that's your fault. That you should have put up a fence. Yeah, I guess uh, we need two stories to the house. I guess it had to be flat roofs or something as well. It wouldn't be a, a crazy roof. I mean, would you be able to fall off a flat roof? Though? I was thinking like you could yeah. probably like could, like trip or something at night and flip off. I mean, accidents happen all the time. Probably you know, drinking the sauce or something and somebody flips off. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, the wine. Maybe. You know, somebody drinks a little bit too much wine on on some night or something, and then yeah, flip themselves to the ground. And that's it. Yeah, better be a high fence so they can't fall over the fence. Yeah. When you fall over the fence, they fall off the house and die. I know, but if the fence is short. They just trip over outside of the house. <laughs> All right, four ninety five. Not to put a stumbling block before the blind. Uh, 
terrible. <laughs> Leviticus 1914. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but revere your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. All right, what does that mean, put a stumbling block before the blind? It means, like, don't trip the blind. Uh... I think it would be. I think you're, it's more than just that. I mean, don't don't. I think it's probably don't mess around with the blind. Don't do something that would not not like technically put you know like a, your foot out and trip the blind. <laughs> that is a stumbling block. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely a stumbling block. But I mean, that, and that that'd be some evil, cruel stuff to do. You know, right out of the gate. You know, stone that person that does that. Yeah, absolutely. You, monster. you, don't, you don't belong here. <laughs> That's a monster. You don't belong in this this place. Yeah, but I think it's more than that. It's like something else. Maybe. Um, you know, That's stealing stealing from the blind or uh, we have alarms going off here. Maybe stealing from the blind or something, you know, just doing stuff they wouldn't be able to defend because they were blind. It would just be a horrible thing. All right, Exodus 23, 5. Help another to remove the load from a beast that can no longer carry it. If you see the donkey of him that hates you lying under his burden and forbear to help him, you shall surely help with him. Yeah, so if you have a dude that you hate and you see his burrow jacked up, you you're supposed help to help them. the burrow. It's yeah. supposed to be, you don't worry about the thing. It's about, you got to help the Donkey. Animal. Help me, donkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I mean, that's that's an interesting command, right? I mean, Yah, it cares about his people. And, I mean, it's obviously they probably loaded the donkeys up until they couldn't even walk anymore or something of the sort or whatever beast. I mean, they literally moved. Joseph moved Yeshua and Miriam down to Egypt on a donkey. <laughs> yeah. They, they probably took their clothes, a lot of their, probably their stuff with them. And, you know, if you don't really care about your donkey, you could probably load that thing up and, you know, make him walk for hundreds of miles. I honestly feel, Poor bad donkey. About, I feel bad about the donkey. It'd be real terrible, yeah. All right, so... Uh, 497, help others load their beasts. Uh, <laughs> and that's also 498, not to leave fallen beasts distraught with their burdens, but help to unload or unload. It's a repeat. Is it, do we just... I uh, know this is the last one's living. Is okay. It, when you see your brother's donkey or his ox fall down on the way, you shall not hide yourself from them. Help him raise them without fail. Yeah, so... so it's I, definitely helpful when you're raising a beast up because they... One well, person with a heavy animal. Yeah, we know how that goes. <laughs> you would definitely want to... You see yeah, some dude beast on the ground, you probably want to go the other direction. It's a lot of work. Yeah, from experience, it's better to have more than one person trying to lift like up an animal. Three or four. And a down beast usually poops all over himself or some bad thing. It's, not, it's just not, whatever, why they're down is not a good thing, and so it's a lot of work. A down beast is a tremendous amount of work. Okay. Um, so, is that it? Yeah. Uh, on that? Which would help our Help our brother, don't, don't, don't just see him and like, hey, he can get out of the But even hey, the, the brother you even, hate, that you don't like, you hate, dislike, yeah, right. because of his donkey, here, let me help. Both help everyone get their animal. If you see someone with their animal, help them up. Help the animal. All right, 499. Buy and sell according to Torah law, Leviticus 25, 14. And that's also 500. Not to overcharge or underpay from your neighbor. Repeat. Repeat, 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 repeat. Let's go. And when you sell whatever to your neighbor or buy from the hand of your neighbor, do not exploit one another. Okay, yeah, so I mean, that's just... That, Don't I mean, rip it's, them off, man. It's the basis of the Torah, right? If you're willing to rip your neighbor off with with something, I mean, anything at all, um, there's something to be said for you, right? You shouldn't be ripping people off. You shouldn't be... You know, the Torah is um, all about love, and it is all about, like, perfect weights and measurements. It's about being righteous. It's about holiness. It's about all sorts of stuff. And so if you're if you're willing to do that, you're willing to do some evil stuff. 501, do not oppress someone. Leviticus 25, 17. And do not oppress one another, but you shall revere Elohim, for I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Yeah, so again, don't... Don't oppress your neighbor, don't hate your, Yeah, you know, it's like when the greatest commandments is what? Love, uh, love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your being, and then there's love your neighbor as yourself. Right, and why does he say the rest of it falls upon, the rest of the, the Torah hangs on all of it? Because which, you have, if you have love, you're not going to steal from your neighbor, you're not going to hurt your neighbor, or overcharge him, you're him, him, you're going to help him lift up his beast, lift up his beast. And if you love Yahuwah, you're going to do what he tells you to do, and he told you to let's follow the Torah. Let's oppress a neighbor, they can't get their car started, and they, they're they like, hey, can you help me with the jumper cables? I got it, it'll be like five bucks in gas, can you like maybe like hook me up with five bucks in but you're right there. I need some gas, you know. It's gonna be, you have to go over there and start the car. You know, so don't oppress them. Don't do that. Okay, 502. Uh, do not sacrifice to other gods. Exodus 22.20. And also 503 is a repeat, repeat, repeat. Exodus 22.20. Hit it, Sam. Oh. Eli. Oh, sorry. Okay, we have some dysfunctional issues here. He that sacrifices unto any Elohim, save unto Yahoo only, he shall be utterly destroyed. 
Okay, yeah, so definitely don't do that. It's, I guess it's enough to repeat it on 502 and 503. Do not sacrifice to other gods, right? Don't worship other gods. Don't say their names. Don't um, be affiliated with them. You know, uh, there is one Elohim. He's the Elohim Most High. He has, He's the creator of all things, and he has a son. And the son is the Ben of Adam, and his name is Yahushua. All right, hit it, boys. What do we got the next one? A uh, Hebrew slave shall be released after six years. Exodus 21, 2. And that takes us to what year? Jubilee. If you obtain every servant, six years he shall serve, and the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. Yeah, so it's uh, released after, it's the seventh year. At the end of six years, they, they go out for free. And if they want to stick around and they think they're, they're, you're a good dude, what do you do? Uh, you usually, like, it's, about, it's, it's, it's a reason you, like, through. pierce their ear. Drive it all through their ear, baby. Yeah, and then they, uh, they like, become good. yours forever because they want to be, be your servant forever, so they're your servant forever. And so. if he has a wife? Uh, it depends on if he if you give it to him or if he came became a servant with a wife. Okay, and if uh, if, if he, you had if you became a servant after, then what? Uh, so if you, if you, he he so okay so if he had a wife first. Yeah. So if he had a wife before he became your servant, he gets to keep his wife. Uh, but if he uh, if leaves from you, if you give him the wife, then you get to keep his wife. That sounds a little harsh. Yeah, I. Uh, but but there was things like say he wanted to stay. Like I love my wife, love my kids. I love working for you. Driving all through my ear. And he was like, he could stay. Yeah, and then I guess, but you gotta have to be a good master. It's like, uh, Respect. it's like a business deal. It's almost like a business thing. It's like at the end of the day, you know, it's a, I can do this. You'll take care of me here. It's, uh, it's not a bad deal, all right? So, uh, five hundred five. Not to sell him as a, sl not to sell him as a slave is sold. What? Not to sell him as a slave is sold. Okay, that makes sense. Let me guess. Twenty five, forty two. It says. And 43. Read it. Okay. For they are my servants whom I brought a land of Mitraim. They are not sold as slaves. Do not rule over him with harshness, but you shall revere your Elohim. Yeah, and so not to work the slave oppressively. So does that say that? Yeah, it said not to work him uh, harshly. 25. <clears throat> yeah, so, and, but I mean, it does give you stipulations to beating the slaves and things, and like, don't beat them a certain amount of times and things. Yeah, there's yeah. like times when they got into fights and stuff. Yeah, different. There's laws for slave owners. I mean, these guys are definitely slave owners, so I don't know how that, how that's justified or whatnot. But I guess if somebody ends up as a slave, these are the rules for it. Okay, not to allow a foreigner to work the slave oppressively. Leviticus twenty five fifty three. So Uncle John comes in and he's a foreigner and he decides he's gonna start beating your slaves. <laughs> Shouldn't do that. He is with. He is with him as a yearly hired servant. He does not rule over with harshness over him before your eyes. Okay, don't let the foreigner beat up the slaves. Uh, Leviticus 25.39, not to have the kinsman slave do menial slave labor. All right. 25.39. Is that what this says? Hit it. It says, and when your brother who dwells by you becomes poor and sells himself to you, do not make him serve as a slave. Huh. It says do menial slave labor. It doesn't actually say that. It says do... So if he's your kinsman, you're not supposed to enslave him. He's supposed to basically like, like, work with you and not for you, I think. Yeah, if you have a job, but I don't think you're supposed to enslave him. Not to have a kinsman. Read that one more time. When your brother, who dwells by you, becomes poor and sells himself to you, do not make him serve as a slave. So give him a little bit of dignity. Um, yeah, yes. pay yeah, I mean, because he is, he's more like your he's brother. He's your brother. I mean, you wouldn't want to like, your brother. It's more like a worker instead of a slave, I think. Yeah, so hook, hook a dude up. Okay, um, where are we at here? So, five nine. Give the slave gifts when he goes free. And the next one, Deuteronomy fifteen fourteen, and th next one is Deuteronomy fifteen thirteen, which is not to send the freed slave away empty-handed. Okay. And when you send him away free from you, let him not go away empty-handed. You shall richly su supply him from your flock and from your threshing floor and from your wine press, which that which Yahuwah has brought you with, you give to him. Yeah, so at the end of six years, you're supposed to hook this dude up. If this dude wants to go, you're supposed to, I mean, this guy should have, like, served you well for six years. Hopefully it wasn't some dude you, like, you had to beat all the time or something. Cause, I, I mean, that's, you know, there's he's a slave. That's what they do is they beat the slaves. Um, they I'm, weren't, their people are owned, right? I'm sure they so, were nice, and I mean, I'm sure there was some, like, crazy revolt. They, like, fight them back, and I'm not sure they would beat them consistently. Yeah, you know, if I had slaves, I don't think we'd beat them. We'd, like, house them and we'd, like, hook them up and stuff of that nature because I think they'd work a lot better than being beat. I don't think anyone works great being beat. 
and you know at the end of the day something they might club you <laughs> turn your back you might get it lights out forever yeah a few of those that are her, her volt it's better to have everyone <laughs> love you and treat everyone well because they were the story of Moses <laughs> Yeah, so where he went in and beat the Egyptian slave driver and killed him. Oh yeah, turned well, around. He, the guy was turned around. He like took a rock, killed him, buried him in the sand. Yeah, because he uh, was killing one of his, his people of Yisrael. Okay, um, so let's do five eleven. If a man divorces a woman, she can be redeemed. Exodus twenty one eight and repeat so, of uh, five twelve is repeat. Five thirteen is repeat. Okay. So that starts in verse seven. This is like about uh, it's about female slaves. If man surrenders his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she pleased not her master, who has betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. To surrender her into a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her. Wow. All right. What's it say? Uh, so basically, if she goes out, uh, she can be redeemed by Yahuwah. By Yahuwah? By like, probably the priest of near relative like Ruth was. So, one more time. Read that one more time. If a man surrenders his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall go out. She shall not go out as the man servants do. If she please not her master, who has betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. To surrender her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her. Anyone get another read on this? Uh, so uh, basically, if she, if he, if a man divorces the woman with a maid, the first it says something about his daughter, right? A yeah, dude so if, a, if, if like he like gave so, her a maid servant, but when he's okay. betrothed, I think that means like married. Yeah. Right? So when he, so if a man gives his daughter away and the guy who married her divorces her or get, like get, it makes her him go out from her, it was like a slave. It was almost sound like a slave. I like he sold her. I think he that was the guy that married her. I think it was the guy he gave his daughter to. It was time. Okay, so she be so, then so she was a foreign nation. He can't stop her from doing that because he got rid of her. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm not exactly clear on this one. I mean, Kay, do you have any input on this? I got nothing. Is that just a translation thing? All right. Um, yeah, so I, I guess if, uh, I don't know, it's, it's something about uh, a guy and his daughter, and then if he, Another guy did it betroth her. But he can't toss her to the foreigners or something? Uh, he can't stop her from going to the foreigners if he gets rid of her. Basically, if he says. So she's free to go where she wants? Yeah, at yeah. that point, yes. All right, well, um, I'm sure we slaughter some of these, but this is why we go through them. 514, the strangers in the land shall be slaves. All right. Leviticus 25, 46. Wait, we're strangers in this land. Dang. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, they, to inherit them as a possession. They are your slaves for all time. But over your brothers, the children of Israel, you do not rule over with harshness, one over another. So foreigners beat like slaves. Uh, kinsmen, no slave ship. Yeah, you're right. I'm sure having Nephilim slaves was pretty great. I'm sh- yeah. yeah. I mean, how, big, do you, how do you big. save the Nephilim? They're huge. It takes a lot of them. <laughs> uh, they got to eat somehow, so you got to feed them food. That's like all slaves must eat. Yeah, they're that big. They could do a lot of work. What happens if they get sick? How do you care for them? The Nephilim? They need a lot of medicine. I don't know. When they die, though, they uh, come back as a demon. Or when they, their souls go yeah. and start haunting you, so yeah, you're, if you die, have slaves, be nice. <laughs> yeah, die. you have slaves. They come back as ghosts to haunt you. When they die, you're gonna hit big hole. Huge hole. You have to have Nephilim cousins help dig the hole. It's huge. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's keep. Working. I don't know how we got into this. Let's hit it. Uh, where are we at, folks? The uh, five fifteen. Five fifteen. Not to extradite a slave who fled to you. Uh, next uh, okay, Deuteronomy twenty three sixteen, and also not to wrong a slave who has come to you for refuge. Deuteronomy twenty three sixteen. Let him dwell with you in your midst, in a place which he chooses within one of your gates, where it is pleasing him. Do not oppress him. Okay, boy, I could get you in a fist fight. I could get you shot. I could get you in a lot of things. Yeah. So um, if 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 someone flees to you, they're looking for refuge. You're not allowed to kick them out. You no. Get, what you happens gotta, when the slave owner comes and like burn your house down? I don't know. Y'all wanted you to uh, save the slave. Yeah. I'm sure y'all has ways with this. I'm sure there were like ruthless slave owners in Israel, and this guy's this foreigner guy's like, "Please help me! I see you're a kind person or something." Yeah, you know, it's like I'm sure there's just some really evil people that do some really evil ownership of slaves. So I don't think we'll get into the verse, but I do want to read the verse above because I, right. we're not doing this, but it will help a little bit. It says, "You do not hand over his to his master, the, the slave who has escaped from his master to you." 
So, what happened? I mean, I guess that was where you'd want to be good to your slaves so they don't run away. Yeah, I guess if your slave like, ran away from you, you has gone. Right, we're not going to use the word slave anymore. We're going to use this uh, co-worker. We're all co-workers here, <laughs> and you guys help me grow things. We will all lead them together. We will all have houses together. We will all make this work. It's one giant team. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, if, you're, uh -huh. if you beat the guy and he runs away from you, I mean, you probably shouldn't have beat him. I mean, he's... he's I, just, I don't... You know... That, it's just really weird. I guess I'm not a slave owner, so I wouldn't know how to like oppress a human being like that. It seems strange. Um, yeah. All right, let's move on. Hopefully we never, ever have to deal with that. 517, the courts must carry out the laws of a hired worker and a hired guard. Exodus 22.9. For all manner of transgression, whether it be for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing, which other challenge is to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. Where's the hired um, guard come in? I see nothing what? about that. Is this anything? What is it? The courts must carry out the laws of a hired worker and a and hired guard. It didn't say that. It said it had to like judge on something, yeah, right? Yeah, like whether like something be lost and like and, and another challenge is of hit like so it's his. Somebody like, steals something. The guy says, hey, like, hey, kinda that's like, mine. Kind of like how Solomon what and Solomon and the uh, ladies two what ladies who said that the child was both theirs. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. But that doesn't say that. So you, can you f fix that? I mean, it's yeah, I don't, sure. read it one more time. For all manner of transgression, whether it be for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for raiment, or for any matter of lost thing, which another challenge is to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. Okay, so I mean, that's basically, you know, you end up with, uh, uh, there's a cloak or something on the ground, you pick up the cloak. And, and this guy claims it. Yeah, it's mine. No, 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 I bought it. And then you have to come with the witnesses and the wife's like, no, no, I made this. Here's my receipt. <laughs> yeah, here's my receipt. This is what I did. Here's the, here's the, uh, receive the sheep uh, shearing that I did for, you know, the next door neighbor to make this happen for everyone. Okay, um, let's roll on. Sorry, guys, about the dog barking. We're so sorry. Um, we just live with it. And so I, when the dogs start howling, I start drinking my coffee because it's not a, such a big thing anymore. I just kind of run with it. Okay, Eli, you're going to fix that? Yeah. 518. Um, pay wages on the day they are, were earned. Deuteronomy 2415. Give him his wages on the same day, and do not let the sun go down on it, for he is poor and lifts up his being to it, so that he does not cry out against you to Yahuwah. It shall be sin in you. You know, that's very interesting, right? Um, I guess it's very interesting from us being a poor perspective um, that Yah absolutely gives it a rip about absolutely everything, and it's like... If you're broke and you're crying out to Yah, I mean, he hears you. And so he does not want um, somebody who worked not to be able to, like, buy food or something of the sort. I mean, and when you cry to Yah, he hears. And so um, this became such a thing that it was an actual command that, you know, the guy works for you, pay the poor person the wages on the same day. And, and you know, we used to do that back in the States when we had employees all the time. People always come to us all the time, hey, can we get a little advanced cash? We got some issues going. We were always doing that for people. So, all right, let's roll um, on. So Leviticus 19.13, do not delay payment of wages past the agreed time. Do not oppress your neighbor and do not rob the wages of him who is hired. It is not to remain with you all night until morning. Okay, so don't oppress the neighbor and do not what? Do not hold the, the uh, money all night long. For what money? The money you owe. The wages. Yeah. The wages. Oh, the wages. Okay. Um, okay, so pay wages. So do not delay payment of the wages past the agreed time. Okay, so, and then, you know, if the guy's poor and the guy's starving to death, give him before, you know, he goes home. Five, two, zero. You can eat your neighbor's grain, but this, this is it? This is okay. Awesome. You can eat your neighbor's grain, but don't cut it down. Deuteronomy 23, 25. It says, when you come into your neighbor's standing grain, you shall pluck the heads with your hand, but do not use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. Okay, so this is very interesting. So, steal. essentially, you can steal, but you're not stealing if you're right. hungry. Right, you can take a piece of grain. As long as you don't, what? Cut it cut down. Cut it down. So, it, what, eat your fill? Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't, if one person, or like two people, it wouldn't be eating too much of a big field. Yeah, you're not taking, you're not ripping the guy off. And, I mean, one person sitting there taking it and grinding up the grain, and if you're just hungry, you're not going to stay in the guy's field forever. Yeah, he's going to But if you're starving to death... Uh, you know, this is yet another way that Yah's like, here, take care of the poor, take care of the starving. This is the provisions for them. And um, that's why you left part of your corners open. That's why you didn't clean off everything. Yeah, you're not supposed to glean your fields. You're not supposed to go through the fields and, and, and do it twice. You're supposed to leave it for what? The poor the and the widows and the fatherless. And? 
The uh, birds. The, okay. Remember the birds? Everybody, it's like everybody gets a little piece of it. Especially on Jubilee years. What's the Jubilee year, Eli? It is the seventh year where you are not supposed to, where you're supposed to let your land rest. Yeah, for, and so, so you, you don't pluck any of it, you don't sow, you don't reap, you just let what, what let, you just let what grows up naturally just stay there. Yeah, it's you just don't glean anything, anything. Like year that. one after Jubilee is going to be a heck of a weed year. It's going to be a problem. Okay, folks. Well, I hope you guys are having fun. Um, see, there's like you know 80 of you guys that are out, sit out there and hang out with us, and we truly, truly, truly appreciate it, and we love going through these law statutes and commands. Um, somebody mentioned out there that it seems like we have a lot of fun doing this. Seems like we have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a good family time. It's a good family experience. Everybody can do this. You know, everybody can do this as a family, and um, we are definitely going to do our very own one of these. We are going to um, we're going to fight the Jews. And we're going to come up with our own list of law statutes and commands that make a far more, um, they make far more sense than what we're looking at right here. And it's going to be in order. And so when we're done with this, we're going to basically start in Genesis. We'll read with you guys. And as we go through Genesis, we will have a little uh, list just like this. And we will see the commands and we will type it in the commands in. And then we will end up and see exactly how many commands there really are um, and how much, you know, the, the, our friends, the Jews, were off on their count here. So that's it, everybody. Um, hope you guys are good. Um, that is the end of this. Any, boys, any advice? Uh, keep reading your Bibles and getting closer to you. Any advice for the young people out there? Uh, read your Bibles as well. It's uh, very important to know Yahoo at a young age. When you're older, you can always have him with you. Yeah, and so do you? Uh, how often do you guys pray? I try to do it as much as I can throughout the day. When I can remember to pray, I will pray. You guys ever like try to start praying and then you like mind drifts off into like nowhere? Yeah, that happens. Yeah. It's time. It does happen. And then you try to do you, what? What do you do at that point? Uh, I usually try to go back into the prayer, try to finish it up, and try to pray. Do you apologize for? Yeah, I always like say, hey, "I'm sorry, man. I just I am so sorry." Went to dreamland. <laughs> you father, you created such a complex brain that we're just sitting here processing a thousand other things, and we just went off somewhere else. But uh, some people say that's also like unclean spirits or demons that yeah, will take uh, us that out of be. prayer. And take our minds into wondering about other stuff other than that. So um, prayer is, is obviously something huge to our creator. Um, it is our way of communicating. Um, anyone have any any kind of advice on prayer? What? How, how are we to pray, pray Eli? Uh, we are to. It's the prayer that Yahoshua told us about. He said, Give Who's Yahoshua? He is, you may know him as Jesus Christ. He is the son of Elohim or the son of God. He says, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. And How does it begin again? And give us this day our daily no, bread. How does it begin? Our Father who art in heaven, yeah, our Father. hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth as, as it, it is, is in heaven. heaven. It never says we're going to be going up, he says make the kingdom down. Yeah, the Shemaim. And so what does it take, at the end of time, I mean, it, it talks a lot about in the Bible, what it takes to make it to the Shemaim. What are some of the qualities of people? What are the characteristics of the people that make the Shemaim? Uh, I'd say tour keeper because he says, uh, be, when you are on Judgment Day, he says, uh, "Be gone from me, you workers of lawlessness." So I'd say tour keepers make it. People who believe, he said, you have to have believe in Yahushua for your sins to be forgiven because you can't be in sin. Yeah, you can't be in sin. And you know, I, I got into a discussion with a gentleman today, and I, for the first time, I think ever. Um, instead of them getting tremendously mad at what I was discussing, he said, "Yeah, hey, I'll you know I'll, I'll tune in for a little bit and, and talk about this." And um, it was it was on you know Paul stuff and how um, people have taken mistakenly taken the writings of Paul and have applied them and made a doctrine out of them, and they will trump what the words of Yah say. And Brother Shaul did not do that. Brother Shaul did not create a separate doctrine he did not do any of that in fact most of everything he says he's, he's just quoting stuff especially in hebrews um verse after verse is being quoted out of isaiah is being quoted out of psalms i mean she's that's all he's doing is basically re-quoting this and so he's not saying that we you know we should get off the the, the narrow path there's a there's a small gate what is the small gate that we always talk about folks uh it says there's a small gate and enter there in because why is the path at least destruction yeah, and so what is that small gate? That is the Torah and Yehoshua. That's like entry. That's that, that's like your life. You uh, enter through that gate. Small small gate is salvation through our Messiah, right. right? And then there's a path. Is this the the path that leads to life? Is it narrow or is it broad? It's narrow. It's really easy to follow the path and fall into sin. There's, there's broad is the
the way it leads to destruction. And what does it say at the very end of that that little section right there? Uh -huh. Most will fall. Most do. Does it say well, most will f find it? Most will no, get in. Few will find. Few it. will find it, and uh, few, many are called, but few are chosen. So it's like. Uh, yeah, many many don't find it. They, there's many, many, many verses that tell us that it is very hard to find salvation. It's very hard to be saved. And so if, if it is hard, and this is what Paul talks about, if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, who can be saved? Who can be saved? And so it talks about, Messiah says, the, the people that enter the kingdom are like what? Children. Children, yeah. Yeah, children. And you have to, what does that mean? Does that mean you're, you're just, you're... Um, a baby or what what does it no, mean? It means you gotta believe like a child because children can believe they have superpowers, they believe they can fly, they believe anything you'll tell them. So if you believe like a child believes, then you will you will make it in. Caden, do you believe in our creator? Yes. Why? Because everything points to him. There is a reason for everything he has done. It only makes sense that he is out there watching over us. We are told, Eli, that our civilization, our world, began with a giant explosion. And out of that explosion, we are sitting here now talking based upon millions and millions, if not billions, of years of uh, evolution. Where did the explosion come from? It's the Big Bang. It just happened. The Big Bang. It something happened. Something caused the explosion, and whatever those things were, something had to have created something. So there had to have been creator something. Something created something, and the only account that we have for anything is, is in the Torah. Yeah, the Bible. And, the, the, you know, you can't dispute that. You you know, there's there's been a flood. There's been all sorts of stuff. I mean, all the way to our Messiah. The Bible is a historical account. That's why it gives us genealogies all the way to our Messiah, all the way to the end. We know who everybody's kid is and everybody's grandfather is, and they give it down the line. And so... Um, it's very important we know the stuff, that we read it. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much. Everybody out there, thank you guys very much. Um, much love to everybody out there. A uh, huge hug from the Boss Clan, and pause up to everybody. Goodbye. Shalom. Shalom.